Cook started off life as part of William Taylor's company called Taylor, Taylor & Hobson. Back, his company started in 1886, and the first Cook lenses appeared in 1893. And we've been involved with the film business, frankly, from the get-go. Uh, we serviced uh, George Eastman, and in fact, when Eastman was going to start Kodak, before he did in 1889, he came over to, to talk to William Taylor about lens making. And for up until the First World War, we supplied Kodak with most of their lenses. So we've, we've got a long and storied history in the film business. Uh, the, the original name Cook actually has an interesting story behind it. Uh, there was a company up in York, uh, England, called T. Cook and & Sons, and they made telescopes. But their chief designer, a guy named Dennis Taylor, he was a photographer and a lens designer, and he created what came to be called the Cook Triplet. And back in the, in the early days of photography, you've seen all those old photographs, they all vignette around the edges. And the reason is to get, to get a photograph sharp all the way to the edges, you'd have to shoot through a pinhole camera, F64. Uh, or smaller. And, and Dennis Taylor came up with this arrangement of glass that allowed you to shoot basically wide open and get detail all the way to the edge of a photograph. And this arrangement of glass became called the Cook Triplet. And it has no real application in telescopes. So the people at T. Cook & Sons took this invention down to their friends uh, the Taylor brothers down in, in uh, Leicester and said, you want to use this in photographic lenses? And of course, they're being smart guys, said, you bet. And part of the deal was that any any lens made using this arrangement would be called a Cook lens. And hence, that's where our name comes from. But if you think about it, the lens you're shooting with and every modern lens today has some system of the Cook triplet in it is they all have detail all the way to the edge, wide open. So, I mean, Cook has been pioneering in this industry for a long time. In the early days, and that would be the pre-sound pre days, uh, you know, it really almost didn't matter what you shot with, although we have letters in the file from like uh, uh, most of the uh, famous players, Mansky, which, uh, studios were made on Cook lenses. Charlie Chaplin was shot on Cook lenses. Uh, Mary Pickford was shot on Cook lenses. I and mean, we, we were really all over the place in both England and in, in Hollywood. Uh, when sound came in, there was a real problem. Because it, it didn't really matter how fast the lenses were in the pre-sound days. They, they either lit sets like we are now with sunlight or they lit with carbon arc lights. It's, you know, they have two pieces of carbon, a thin piece and a thick piece, an anode and a cathode, and they put them pretty close together and they jump a lot of electricity through them. They're very noisy and they're very dirty because that, the carbon's burning off. Well, again, on the silent film, who cares? But when the sound came in, can't have the carbon arc light on the set. It's just too, forget the smoke and the dirt, it's just too noisy. And you can imagine the state of incandescent lighting around 1920s, pretty primitive. So the industry really needed a fast lens. And in the old days, Taylor Hobson made lenses for everything. So still cameras, motion picture, projectors, you name it, we made lenses for it. Um, we had just developed a set of lenses for stills called Series O, and they were pretty fast. They were F2, and in those days, that was pretty fast. Um, couldn't sell, couldn't give these things away because the still guys didn't want to pay an extra five or ten pounds or to get a, a slot. You know, my F3.5 lens, I just use a little more flash powder or another half second exposure. I don't need to. I don't need to spend the extra money for uh, an F2. But the guys at Cook were pretty smart. When, they, when the sound came in, they took the series out, converted them from still to motion picture lent use, and created the speed fan crows. You're hard pressed to find a film that was shot anywhere. We made the speed fan crows from the 1920s 
up through 1965. And especially in the first 30 or 40 years of sound, you'd be hard pressed to find a film that did not have cook lenses on it. Uh, I mean, we do have some letters in the studios that say, you know, Sweet Pancras made talking movies possible. 